Is this working? All right, it's working. <laughs> so this is going to be uh, really unedited, I guess. I don't know, man. Uh, I had a video written up and planned for when this happened, but just like life, this happened out of nowhere and not when everyone expected it to happen. So, oh well. So I just woke up like 20 minutes ago and I immediately opened up Twitter, like all people who hate their lives do. And right in front of my eyes was an article linked by Battlefield Bulletin, which uh, says that Motive Studios will actually be joining the folks at DICE, Criterion, and Ripple Effects in making the next Battlefield game, working as a support studio for all aspects and specifically helping the development of the single player experience after Marcus Leto's falling out with EA and the subsequent shutting down of Ridgeline Games. Which just goes on to prove the absolute stupidity EA has when they don't even allow the guy who co-created Halo to do his job because it doesn't line up with what EA wants and all EA wants is something fast and quick. And now with more studios coming over to help it just feels like they're setting up the next one for a disaster again and internally it sounds like more and more people are leaving the project within the other studios. Almost like gutting a whole studio just because they presented a project differently from the way you envision it wouldn't really set well with most of the developers on the ground. Oh wait. But that's not what we're here today about, because the article actually starts off with 2042. It says that last month they just released Season 7 of the game, Turning Point, which added two new maps, three new weapons, and a new vehicle to the game. While we've enjoyed and are proud of creating these seasons of additional content for Battlefield 2042, it is now necessary for us to turn from the present to the future. What this ultimately means is that Season 7 will serve as the final season for Battlefield 2042. After Season 7 concludes, we will continue to support the game with new in-game challenges, events, modes, and of course ongoing maintenance but we are moving away from delivering official seasons. We know this may be disappointing, however as we look at what the future of the series required, it became clear it was time for us to shift our resources and focus to be fully dedicated to what comes next. Where the hell do I even start with this? I guess for the majority of the community this news comes as a big surprise believe it or not, nobody expected the game to get its fifth season when it did, as everyone, including me, just expected all support to end after the fourth season. But we ended up getting that fifth season. And now, it's like deja vu all over again because everybody expected there to be uh, an eighth season. And I mean, everyone. Even the game's biggest haters expected it as much as we all thought EA wanted that bragging rights for supporting this game for full two years. And the way how the devs were talking about content with the community, it sounded like we were going to get that A season. But from the sound of this article, EA is going full panic mode and reevaluated all their studios. Again. After firing all of Ridgeline games, it sounds like they're all hands on deck for the release of the next Battlefield game. Which, by the way, isn't coming out till fall of next year as people speculate. And yeah, we know the development of the game is reported to still be a safe game. With returning features that the community wants, and factions being NATO versus PMCs to avoid, you know, bad guys being bad guys in real life or something, which at that point just making NATO go up against the Pan-Asian coalition, but oh well I guess. But yeah, uh, the game's over. All this shit, all this bullshit, finally fucking over. The last content update for the game is coming out in May, where we'll get the bomber, the stadium map, and the new machine gun. But lining that up with the release of the next game, that gives us 17 to 18 month gap in between games again. Pretty much if not longer than the content gap seen from Battlefield 5 to 2042's release. And I have a lot to say about this game which I have written up in a video that I thought I would probably be uploading right around the time we all thought they would be cancelling the support of the game after an 8th season. But just like everything else, life has surprise mechanics. But as it stands, Battlefield 2042 will be remembered as one of the worst Battlefield games by the community and normal people alike. Never truly breaking that launch bubble, as yeah, the game was released in the worst state I have ever seen a AAA multiplayer game ever release. The most buggiest bullshit I have ever played. Filled with weapons that didn't fucking work, on maps that were way too open and barren that would make Battlefield Hardline blush by the sudden praise it got around the time, and on modes that was just a gimmick mode, and it did nothing with the higher player count. Releasing on both current and last gen consoles, which by the way, releasing this on last gen consoles is what hindered the potential of the game, as all content post launch would have to release on all consoles no matter what, greatly affecting the development of any and all content as these fossils had to be considered in the process. But just like everything else, it got fixed. With update after update, the team of 4 janitors at DICE was able to dig this game to make a game 
I could recommend to people. But as much as I say that, there was still so much wrong with the game. And as a person who, let me see this shit real quick. who has played the game for 890 fucking hours, there was still so much wrong with the fucking game that I just, I, I, I guess I just fucking ignored, all right? As a diehard Battlefield fan, there was so much wrong with this fucking game. The game now will forever be a bad Battlefield game, but as an FPS, it was all right. I always saw 2042 as just being one update away. One update that would truly shine and show people how much the game has come along one update away from breaking out of its shell one update away to shutting most of the people who don't even play the game and just shit on it for internet points one update away and it never came sure we got close to it i thought season six and redacted was going to be the update that brought back so many people and with the steam player account suppressing that of the launch player accounts around that time that would indicate that this update was the update and sure redacted is probably the best close quarter maps they have ever done beating metro and lockers in my opinion that's right i said it there was still a lot left to be desired like it was just a piece of the overall update the greater youtube and gaming community after having their fun with the game around the time of season six quickly forgot about that game soon after and slowly went back to the launch mindset for the game despite seeing how far it's it's crawled out of the crater that was its launch it just still wasn't it it never showed its true potential it never fixed the keyboard and mouse bug they never added the battlefield 3 weapons they said they would they never fixed the map rotation they never fixed the cpu bug they never brought the base anti-air returns into the game they never brought over portal vehicles they brought over portal maps to the base game, but only in 64 players and never added the ones that would work in 128 players into 128 players. They never fixed the rush never ending bug and they never gave us what we wanted. That one update. Falling completely short of other games, being tied with Battlefield 5 in content and in technicality beating it. It still falls leagues behind games like Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1. Battlefield 5. Shit, even Battlefield Hardline. It fell on its face a mile away from the finish line. Forever an example of what corporate meddling and studio heads who don't know what the fuck they're doing can do to a franchise. Forever a reminder why we lost Battlefront 2. Forever a reminder how no matter how good marketing is, to never pre-order. A reminder why premium should be still a thing. As come on guys, we've now had two full games be done with the life service model and both have fallen short to our expectations with the funny thing being 2042 being more consistent with its post-launch content and still having basically nothing to show for both games had the same potential but never truly reached it and 2042 having the most of the two and falling harder as it may be the slowest and driest post-launch content offering i have ever seen in a modern day video game but what does it say for the next title well yeah on paper the next battlefield is shaping up to be something the fans have been asking for but so was 2042. And 2042 goes to prove that no matter how many developers you put into a title, it can still look like a complete fucking mess that was done within a day or two at the office with no actual content either ready for launch or the seasonal offerings. And Battlefront 2 goes to prove that even if all the studio successfully pulls together and create an amazing game on release, it can still be shot in the foot by the greediness and the gluttony of electronic arts. I'm sort of glad that I decided to expand my content when I did. If you look back when I decided to actually do this YouTube stuff again, I started by making 2042 update videos. While I didn't care about views or anything like that, I still uploaded because it was a game I was still heavily invested in. I was interested in this. I actually cared for the game. We all pick our life service games to leech onto. What can I say? There came a point where I asked myself, what is it that I wanted to do with this channel? And the answer was to make better videos. So I did, with this video, which is still my proudest video despite it being one no one watched. But it still found people, and people liked it. People like Enders, which I know is like Ben Shapiro of the Battlefield community, but he watched it and he told me some stuff privately that gave me a morale boost that I seriously needed at the time to continue making videos. But the question still lied. Did I want to continue making Battlefield content solely? I took a risk with a Lego video and that paid off and now I feel like I'm free to do whatever I want. I really do not want to be tied down to one thing ever again. But 
that was just my story. There's still countless of channels that have started their Battlefield content creation within the past two games, and a lot starting with 2042. The content drought between Battlefield 5 and 2042 was already bad enough, and now it's round two. I'm honestly scared for these guys because a lot of these 2042 channels are really great people, and I know a lot of them are probably asking themselves, what now? What do we do now? And it sucks because even in the shit pile that was 2042, there was still a glimmer of hope that we all latched onto. But at the end of the day, it was still in my eyes, even after all its shortcomings, even after the launch controversy, even after the piss poor quality of content coming to the game, even after the six months that was season six, even after all of DICE's bullshit excuses that they gave for this game, after all of that, I still thought it was just one update away.